From Hollywood, it's out of my mind. I'm Jay Douglas, and in episode 23, one of our most popular stories, the vicious cycle of rise and fall that was the life of David Dunbar Buick. It's another out of my mind short story. We'll have one for you every week through the end of 2015. They're for baby boomers like you who are relentlessly curious about everything. If you're not a baby boomer, you can still listen to the program. All you have to do is find someone with a restored Pontiac GTO and experience the thrill of burning through three gallons of gasoline backing out of your driveway. Buddy, we're going to shut you down as episode 23 of Out of My Mind begins with a burst of entrepreneurial spirit. This is the story of an entrepreneur. You know his name, but you probably don't know that you know it. He didn't write computer programs, analyze big data, make over healthcare, or design silicon chips. As historian Kevin Kurbitz tells it, this entrepreneur's first business, which he started with a partner, made toilets, and then they went into other plumbing supply businesses. Our entrepreneur's legacy invention is not something you call Mike Diamond to repair, though you do use it sitting down. Kevin Kerbitz is not only a historian, he's a renowned expert in the life of David Dunbar Buick, who went from rags to riches to rags to riches to rags to riches to rags. Along the way, Dave Buick played a critical role in the formation of General Motors. But I'm getting ahead of things. First, we have to get Dave Buick out of the toilet uh, business. You look at at what his patents were in the plumbing business, you can really see how a lot of the details transferred over to the uh, the gasoline engine. You, know, you look at just the brass castings for a valve or the brass casting for a carburetor, and um, you, you can control the flow of water with the valve, and you control the flow of, of air and fuel with the carburetor. Um, a lot of the, the basic principles are kind of the same. So 1895, he was experimenting with gasoline engines, and by 1899, the first Buick automobile was built in Detroit. There we go. Now, all Dave Buick needed was luck and money. Lots of money. And more than a little luck. A lot of investors have been burned by um, Henry Ford um, with uh, his second um, venture into the car business and um, had a hard time raising money. So he was selling his engines to a company in Flint called the Flint Wagon Works. They were interested in buying the company and that, that they moved Buick to Flint in late 1903 called the Buick Motor Company. With the income from building gasoline engines, Buick had the capital to back development of the car that bore his name. Until he didn't. The folks at the Flint Wagon Works uh, wanted, a, uh, wanted somebody else to run the company. They just felt a better manager was in order. And they, they got Billy Durant. No longer in charge of his company, Dave Buick's automobile plans were running out of gas. Except Billy Durant was a successful industrialist and millionaire, and he didn't get that way by not knowing a good opportunity when he saw one. And he saw one in Buick. Billy Durant turned it into like an overnight success, where Buick had built 37 cars its first year. Durant um, built, I I think the numbers in like 750 the second year of production, and then it just kept climbing from there. And by, uh, by 1908, Buick was doing so well that Durant uh, expanded. He created General Motors in 1908 based on the, the solid financial position that Buick was in. Dave Buick, who got in on the ground floor of General Motors, was set for life. Until he wasn't. In 1910, Durant lost control of General Motors. And some, uh, some bankers came in, took control of the company, and all of a sudden the royalties that Buick was supposed to be paid quit coming. Buick was by no means poor. He had money in the bank and was recognized as a millionaire himself. And then... And then he went into the oil business in California. Hit a couple of gushers. The oil company fell into some, we'll call it shady promotional techniques. Uh, The company was sued, mail fraud, and uh, the the case uh, was finally dismissed. But the the funds that were being pumped in to defend uh, the Buick company just depleted a lot of his finances. Losing General Motors, conned by a shady oil company. But none of this was the end for Dave Buick, entrepreneur. He was designing carburetors while he was in California still. And he licensed the manufacturer to, uh, to another company in Michigan. 
and he was getting royalties from that. Buick bounced back. He had money again, and this time he wasn't going to throw it into some hole in the ground. No, this time he was going to lose it topside. He then went to Florida in about um, 1924, and he became involved with land development. Uh, He started a company, or a, a city, a real estate development called Buick City Realty. Uh, in central Florida. Timing was bad. Location was great, but there was a, a land bust, and he lost his fortune there, too. By 1926, David Dunbar Buick was 72 years old. He'd made and lost three fortunes. Now he was losing his health. He wound up back in Detroit in uh, 1926. He was an instructor with the Detroit School of Trades. Uh, he was finally interviewed in 1928 by uh, Bruce Catton. Uh, found him at the, at the information desk of the School of Trade. So his health had declined to where that was all he was doing was working at the, at the front desk. When the stock market crashed in 1929, David Dunbar Buick didn't lose what little he had left. He had died in poverty a few months earlier. History never recorded the last time he was able to afford a Buick of his own. Today, Few people know that Buick was named after an inventor and an entrepreneur and wasn't the result of some focus group testing. We don't remember people that die poor, unfortunately. We remember people that, that, that die millionaires and leave, leave their, their heirs lots and lots of money. It's rather sad. Kevin Kerbitz is an engineering manager with General Motors, and he began his career with Buick. He's also a historian, a member of the board of trustees of the Durant Dort Carriage Company Foundation, and a member of the board of the Buick Heritage Alliance. Kevin has some interesting anecdotes about Buick automobiles, including the origin of the insignia on the front and the reason Buicks had portholes in the 1950s and 60s. You'll find these episode extras on our YouTube channel. Go to Out of My Mind Podcast on YouTube.com. That's Out of My Mind Podcast on YouTube.com. Click on Playlists and choose Extras. And don't forget to read the show notes. If you're listening on YouTube, click on the Read the Show Notes banner that will appear in a moment. Otherwise, go to outofmymindpodcast.com, click on episode 23, and follow the link to show notes. And that will put the brakes on episode 23 of Out of My Mind. In episode 24, we're going to take another listen to Dr. Ed Krupp, the director of the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. With all eyes turned to the sky during the holiday season, watching for Santa and his sleigh, it's a time to also wonder what else is up there, and why should we care? It's another Out of My Mind short story. I'll have one for you every week through the end of 2015. That's next Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern, and we can talk then. I'm Jay Douglas. Out of My Mind is produced by Penny Summers, and is a production of the Theater of Your Mind Incorporated, Hollywood, California.